Good morning, everybody. It's your boy, Big J, and I'm finally back here with you today. Uh, sorry for the long hiatus. Uh, I have not done the morning recording in a while. Um, no excuses. Been working on a couple of other projects. Um, been handling other types of business, but uh, this is where I need to be right back here with you guys. And I just want to tell all of you, ho, 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 Merry Christmas. And uh, <laughs> that's because I uh, received a phone call out of the blue yesterday from my brother um, saying that um, there is a, uh, a Santa uh, position that uh, needed to be filled at a local event. And that local event is the Christmas Crafts Cookies and Cheer Christmas event at the North Bend Community Center here on the Southern Oregon coast. And it's uh, presented and organized by Flying Chicken Tattoo, the best tattoo parlor in Oregon, Southern Washington, Northern California, and Western Nevada. If you're on the Southern Oregon coast and come by their place of business, they will hook you up with a nice tattoo. Um, so just uh, look them up. They're all over Facebook. They got their Google page hooked up. Um, very unique name, um, eye-catching, uh, great artwork. Um, so, yeah, and they're doing great community work. Um, they're organizing events like this, which gives kids who may not have the opportunity to have much during uh, the Christmas season the opportunity to join in, in some festivities. Uh, they get to do some holiday-type um, crafting things, get to make some cool holiday stuff, uh, get hooked up with lots of holiday goodies, and they get to see the main man from the North Pole, your boy, Santa Claus. <laughs> ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Just so you guys know, I don't just do the hip-hop version of Santa Claus. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas, boy. But uh, <laughs> uh, myself being a kid from the wrong side of the tracks, and uh, someone who was a ward of the court for uh, over half their childhood... Um, I really appreciate uh, places like this, local businesses who are organizing local community events to strengthen the community and to bring people together. Shouldn't just be for Christmas; it should be for any time of year. Um, but it never hurts. So uh, it is Christmas time, and they're putting together this um awesome event. I get to sit on stage in my Santa chair and hand out candy and tell kids Merry Christmas and uh, what do you want for Christmas this year young boy or you know all that cool Santa stuff so it's about the easiest role someone can play um, especially for a, a six foot tall 300 pound big white boy it comes about as naturally as you can imagine um, so I hope all of you guys are having a, a great winter it's been a while since I checked back in with you um, three weeks or so I think the last time I did one of these was right around the beginning of the month here, and uh, it's already Christmas, and time just flies by. Um, working on a couple of other projects, like I said, since last time I talked to you guys, I believe I released a Fight Shark video. I released two poems on my Critically Creative Entertainment YouTube page, my main YouTube page, which is the uh, umbrella for all of my other projects. Um, one released um, about... A week ago called Generations, uh, Generation to Generation. Um, it's a poem about um, remembering to respect our elders and to still gain knowledge from them while we're still lucky enough to have them here. And I released another poem called uh, The Universe Within. And both of these are um, recited by myself, um, both written and performed and spoken word by myself, uh, you know, by myself, and then uh, laid some uh, cool music. Um, track some ambience over the top of them and, and put it all together and uh, put together a little slideshow on each of them. So those both of those videos are available um, on Critically Creative Entertainment on YouTube. Um, what's your guys' best uh, Christmas memory? Um, when you guys look back in the file cabinets of your memory, um, what's something there that makes you feel special about maybe a time growing up when Maybe a certain year something really cool happened or, um, you know, maybe even something tragic maybe happened and, um, you know, there's some nostalgia, some dark nostalgia feeling there. I mean, what is what are the powerful Christmas holiday feelings that you guys have out there? Um, myself, personally, um, I have a couple of different stories I could tell about Christmas. Um, nothing too, you know, nothing really, the, all the bad stuff in my life, I think all happened around 
summertime and shit like that. Like around Christmas, excuse the language, uh, family friendly version of the morning recording. Um, so ixnay the s nay out of that sentence a. Um, anyways, um, when I was six years old, uh, my older brother Ivan, he's uh, seven years older than me. He was uh, thirteen, and uh, we went to sleep on Christmas Eve, nice and early. And uh, Ivan, especially, but both of us were notorious for like being so excited on Christmas morning that we just couldn't wait to get up and to uh, open our presents and to share time with our family. But um, Ivan always woke up before I did, and it had to have been like four in the morning or something like that. And uh, Ivan woke me up, and he's all, Psst, Jerry, it's Christmas. <laughs> and I was like, what? Oh, really? It is? And he's like, yeah, come on. And I was all, no, we're going to get in trouble. He's all, no, they got us bikes. And I was like, <gasps> and my eyes lit up, and I didn't even know how to ride a bike yet, but I knew that I wanted to, and it was like one of those things, like it was like a ride of passage for a boy in our generation to be able to learn how to ride a bike and it was important and I was so nervous about learning how to ride one but at the same time I knew I wanted that bike because I was going to be able to learn how to ride a bike and we got up and my parents it, it my dad and my stepmom Rachel and my grandma um, they always did a, a good job of uh, waiting until Christmas Eve until he went to bed to do all the like to do a lot of the wrapping of the presents and stuff like that like they didn't like to leave a lot of presents under the tree very early like they were pre- like they like to keep their stuff under wrap. Like they didn't want to give the kids a chance to be able to go under the tree and shake a present around and try to figure out what it was. So um, when we went to bed the night, the, you know, the night before, we had no idea that there was bikes, and we and we got up and there's two shiny bikes sitting there in the front room next to the Christmas tree, and that was a really cool Christmas. And my dad, he always like through all the downs that we had like uh he always made sure to share time with his boys like during like christmas and holidays and and things like that and i'm appreciative of that you know what i'm saying so um he always like i could tell like i could see like my eyes were lit up as a child and i could tell that his eyes were lit up as as a full-grown man and a father you know playing you know uh with his kids and teaching me how to ride a bike and also that year we got these little uh remote control like monster trucks i remember and we used to like we have like this little like two or three foot uh, cord on them we could only you know not radio control this is back in the day guys remote control and uh <laughs> i remember playing with those with us and and uh christmas was uh the christmases that i had with him when he was there um he always made sure that uh, they were very special so um that's one of my favorite christmas memories another one is um Christmas uh, in the home that I uh, finished my adolescence in, um, my family in Lemoore, um, the Clark family, um, Christmas at their home, um, at our home there <clears throat> was pretty special in its own right. So uh, my, bio- my biological family, they would like to open presents on Christmas morning and uh, do it that way, the, you know, the more traditional way. But my foster parents, uh, they like to have us open our presents on Christmas Eve. And I think it's probably because they wanted to avoid what <laughs> my parents didn't avoid when we were kids. And that's us getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning and going, where's our presents? Where's our presents? It's Christmas, technically. Uh, they were going to beat us to the punch on all that, make a preemptive strike, and just let us open our presents the night before. That way, whenever we woke up the next morning, we would have everything to play with already, and they could sleep in. <laughs> they were smart. Um, however, um, they always did cool little special things. So um, Christmas Eve, like early evening, they'd always find a reason um, to get all of us kids um, out of the house for a little while, um, like maybe drive around and go look at Christmas lights or go down the street to grandma's house and uh, there and spend some time there. And then they would always plan it to where whenever we were coming back, um, my mom's brother, my uncle Larry would be uh, dressed up as Santa Claus and would be inside the house in the, 
and the front blinds would always be wide open um, so we could see inside the house and he would be in there like with the sack over his shoulder putting presents down underneath the tree and stuff like that and they always um, the thing at their house was that Santa always um, gave each person one gift and it was like the gift like the most special or like you know the the pro like the the nicest gift or whatever the gift that they thought the kids were, would be the most excited over that was the Santa gift and so um, Santa would leave gifts and uh, and Santa would leave and would say bye Santa da, 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 da. I don't even remember how my uncle Larry left like he just walked off or it wasn't very authentic that way you know what I'm saying but um, I think we would come into the house and be like oh Santa and then he would just you know close the door behind him and go out the front door and we'd be inside the house with the presents. I think that's how it went. But, um, and then we would open the Santa gift and then, um, they would throw on the video recorder and, uh, <laughs> record all of his kids opening up presents. And the president opening there was intense cause, uh, and awesome, you know, and this is first world stuff, you know, like, uh, it's all the people out there in countries where you can't even have a fresh drink of water. Like I sound like a real jerk right now. And, uh, Shout out to all you guys out there in this real, real struggle. But um, the Christmas tree usually, because there was ten foster, there was ten kids, um, actually eleven of us all together, and then my cousin Jennifer, so twelve, and then my cousin Daryl, he was like in eighteen, nineteen. So, but then like there was like twenty five to thirty people and. The Christmas presents underneath the tree extended halfway out into the front room, like way beyond the edges of the border of the tree. Like, uh, it was crazy. Like there was usually hundreds of gifts under the tree and they were just stacked and piled in like, like a 15 foot radius of, of presents underneath the tree. And then we would all open them and people would, and we would have, a uh, wrapping paper fights and make them into little balls and throw them at each other and play with their gifts and talk crap to each other and enjoy the, the Christmas, uh, all together. So, um, through all the, um, structure that helped me succeed in the foster home, um, there's a lot of loving, uh, thoughtful moments, like how they took care of Christmas. So, um, that's pretty awesome. So, um, I hope all of you out there, um, are making decisions with your heart first. Um, you're reminding yourself every day that the love in your heart and the love for those around you is the most important thing and that it trumps any financial gain or um, anything else that you may be going through with those people. Um, so uh, don't be a jerk and make all your thoughts with your um, with your brain. Make some make those thought make those choices. I'm sorry, make those choices with your heart and um, let your heart lead first. And um, be kind and gentle and, and all of that. Uh, not just through the winter, but all year long. Um, all win all, Usually all summer long, I tell myself that I'm not going to allow myself to feel whimsical or like that little kid feeling during Christmas time because it's just an illusion and uh, for capitalistic gain. And um, it is. There's tons of profits to be made this time of year for rich, greedy men out there. But... Um, at the same time, I spent many of special moments with family members this time of year, and I just can't help feeling um, nostalgic towards them. I miss all of you guys out there, everyone in Lamore, Hanford, in California, Mariposa, um, of course, everybody closer to me here in Oregon, um, all my acquaintances, all my family members, all my friends, all of the people that have loved, hated, wanted to see me come and go, never wanted to see me again, wanted to see me... Uh, just one more time, everybody out there, all my boys, all my girls, all my ladies, all my dudes out there. You guys all have a wonderful Christmas. It's an extremely short version of the morning recording. I have about an hour to go before I have to be down to be Santa Claus. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Y'all have a wonderful day. This has been the morning recording. Thank you. Thank you.